funny quip, funny quip, I don't know a funny quip. Uh, three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the B and Dow stream today on this fine Monday. It's always a Monday. Today is the 30th of January, 2023. I hope you are having a wonderful time. Uh, you've had a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend and you will have a wonderful week, whichever comes first. Um, so, uh, but yeah, no, I've had a pretty decent week. Bit of a, like, I felt suddenly productive all of a sudden. So, uh, I've, I've been doing some spring cleaning, clearing around the house, going, hey, I don't need this anymore. Or, I, like, why am I still holding on to this? Like, that kind of stuff. Uh, speaking of spring cleaning, how about let's jump pretty much right into it. Uh, the... Boom, there we go. So today is potentially the last stream of Warrior Land 3 that I'll do. On the last uh, stream, I kind of rushed my way into beating the game. Uh, if we go into the uh, the treasures screen, you'll see that I have 70 of the 100 goodies to pick up in the game. There are still 30 to go, and I've done a bit of planning. I've actually drawn down what's the goodies, what's the things I need. And I've got a, hopefully, a specific order. On top of that, after beating the final boss of the game, but before collecting all the treasure, you'll have these little red dots telling you which levels still have stuff in them. So, there's still a few levels here and there, but I've got a specific order of things that I'll need to do. Um, there's also some fun ones, like it'll have dots like that, where it's like, that's a different level. That is actually like a level I've still not gone into, and yes, I didn't even realize this, but there are indeed levels that still have yet to be uncovered. So, speaking of yet to be uncovered... Okay, your guess is as good as mine. Every time I go into this level, I always get lost because I always keep forgetting that the, uh, the grey key is... Well, the, the red chest is in that direction, on the left. The... Oh, and now I've got the, the heavy pickup, so that's the, the big thing that is going to help me uncover the, the remaining few treasures. But I keep forgetting that going up there is uh, actually the way to uh, the red treasure. So, uh, yeah, I yeah the blue treasure's just over here, so I'm just going to find how do we do it. I think when you're a snowman, you do get the ability to roll in that direction, but I'm not strong enough. I'm not strong enough, so I don't believe I saw a slope in this direction. Um, but yeah, no, I hope you at home are having a, uh, having a wonderful time. Uh, I've had another week to flex with the 4070 Ti, and, uh, all I'll say is basically, well, it is a graphics card, but, uh, I've been doing some AV1 encoding, which has been neat. I haven't really gotten, like, it's a bit subtle, the improvements of AV1. Um, ooh, this is interesting. I think there are two different hardness of snowman blocks here. You can see that this one's... Well, it's, it's probably not that noticeable right now, but... Uh, the block I broke was a bit lighter than the other ones. I assume now it's gonna be dodge, dodge the snow and just keep going. I gotta jump over this one. And then... This looks like the place, doesn't it? Probably could have just done this the entire time. And there we go, blue key, blue chest, easy, easy money, easy stuff. Clear that one off. One down, 29 to go. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, I guess in the, in the world of Australia, we had Australia Day, we had Chinese New Year, um, so, uh, I guess, yeah, big days for... That kind of stuff. I love how I didn't even mention Australia Day. Uh, I actually spent um, Thursday watching the... Uh, I think we're going into the castle now. Yeah. Uh, Thursday I actually spent the time watching the... Or Friday actually, because it was Friday local time. Uh, I spent watching the uh, the MX-5 Cup uh, at Daytona. It was uh, across two days. Um, and it was not the whole cup. It's just the first two races of seven venues, so they were at the same venue for both races. Um, 
And uh, it was good fun. They were nice bumper to bumper. They were doing like bump drafting. They were doing some real nifty corners. There was a weird like double pit maneuver on the second race where like someone like kind of side some sided one guy. He kind of kicked a bit to the left, uh, and then uh, whoop, and then um picked up someone else. And they were both kind of drifting across. Um, it was kind of fun seeing like how you know just because you spun out of it doesn't mean you're entirely out of it, but you got to keep your momentum. So. Okay, so this is, uh, red key is up there, and we're in the same issue where I need to figure out, or the red chest is up there, rather. So, how about, let's get the, let's get the, the key first, rather than figure out the chest yet. Um, but I think I remember the key was down, um, in, this is where the green chest is. Gosh, this level, I swear. Every time I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? So I'm pretty sure I get rid of the blocks and then I go down from here. Because if I keep going left, I just get to the gray key. Look at that, I remember this level. So this was the thing, I couldn't knock this guy and break down here before. So this might lead me to- no, I did go down here before because this led to the red- the red key. Ah, stuff it, let's just have the thing open. Three, three. Red key. Feet steps one to five of the gray key walk through. Instead of entering a dash jump to the right, you'll fall where a snow bear is. Pick him up and throw him through the throw box. Fall down with the volcano's head right into the next room. And the next room repeatedly jump across the platforms on the right. I swear I went this way. This way looks very familiar. Unless I went along the ground. Was that the key? That is the key. Okay, from when the kids head back left, back to the first frame, hit left, fall down, continue left, but in the next frame, hit the switch, exit, back to the mirror, hop on the platforms and left. The next frame, pick up the enemy, head right, and throw him up to the thin platform. Really? You could just throw him up. Interesting. Okay. I have Papa Game Facts here because uh, otherwise I'm going to be taking my sweet time. Am I ashamed to be using Game Facts? Perhaps. I swear this game is a lot harder than the first game though, and uh. Tonight my time's a little precious, so I've got that one just to super guide me, in that case. Um. So just... Throw him up through the thin platform. Oh, because I'm an idiot and you're supposed to do... That. You can hold down B, of course. And he's got a very high throw, apparently. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> and he has vanished from existence. So revealing in the chest, we have a uh, candle. Everyone likes a good candle. And I love how even after beating the game, there's still all these like items that are just going, hey, you know what? I could burn this bush. And that's right, there's another level there! How amazing is that? Also, it finally, finally, it links back up to the north side, so... Now you can just keep going around, around the world like that. So, let's check it- also, this, yeah, there's still another level just in there. The Forest of Fear. We need another forest level, didn't we? Okay, so I'm gonna assume climbing this way is... Bound to be the way to go. There's no new abilities to really linger around, so... Uh... I don't think anything is too obscure, but definitely... You know... <laughs> we got platforms, we got ledges, we got doors everywhere. Am I going the right way? Who knows? The very ominous looking area. There's a coin, there is a blue key, but since it's a new level, I should probably be going for the gray first. So... But keep an eye out, that is where the blue goes. And, yep, you fall, you fall. Okay, well the, the gray key is over there, interesting. Okay, 
So, um, yeah, other than that, for the games I've been playing in the past week, it has still been Gran Turismo 4. I have gotten to this fun point where I've now done all the endurance events and I swallowed my pride a little bit, um, but I kind of felt, hey, you know what, like, as much as I'd love to say I did all the endurance events a spec, it was a lot of effort. So I did about half of them, including two of the, sorry, including the Nurburgring 24 hour. I did manage to do that one with some save states just to be able to suspend my game. Um, the, uh, I think the Suzuka thousand kilometers, many of the four hour ones. So the only ones I didn't do in a spec, I didn't do the, um, the Fuji thousand kilometers. I didn't do the, um, one of them's eight hours. I forgot which one was eight hours. Like timed eight hours. Uh, and then another one was timed nine hours. I think it was actually Sakuba was timed nine hours. And then I didn't do both Soka de la Sard's 24 hours because ugh. But I did have to pick up the slack and actually like drive for half an hour in that one because my my AI driver was terrible. He just did not know what he was doing. Um, which I think is kind of like, it's a neat mode, but it's also like, yeah, like, when you when your AI driver isn't doing what they should in that mode, it's a pain, so. Other than that, it's been smooth sailing going through and, uh, doing, like, all the other kind of, um, one-make events, which has been good fun, because a lot of them are, uh, you know, events I've never done. 18 years of owning this game, and I've never put in the effort to actually, like, do every event. And like some of these events are kind of interesting because uh, there's one, the uh, the Speedster Cup, where you drive uh, the Opel Speedster and the AI are cheating so much. You take the same car, look at this, this is a little vanity mirror? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And my soul has been sucked out. Oh, it turns out there was a whole level over there, who would have known? The Warped Void, that's right, this is a... Uh... Kind of weird level over here. It's just like, it's just here, you know? But, uh, this level is, um... It's, it's filled with teleports, basically. And it's, uh, one of those very abstract levels again. You know, just, like, look at these doors! That's amazing! But, uh, just like the end of, uh, Warrior Land 2... You gotta put in the efforts, put in the smarts. Understand what on earth, where on earth, and how on earth. This is just gonna warp me back, but oh, boy. oh, okay. Oh, really? Really? We're going all the way back here if I die. Can I just carry this guy through the door or nah? Nah. Okay, too big. Um. But yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, Oh, I noticed it says a 1 there. That's how you know you're in room 1. I fell for it twice. I fell for the same problem twice. Um, but yeah, it's like uh, the speed stick up, the AI cheating. You can max out your car, you'll be kind of closer, but not quite. You still got to win on pure, like, skill after a while. And I kind of like these events. Just, you know, take a car. Take a car and just go with it. You know, you don't have to upgrade it in any way, just use it. And that's the cool part about all these events, and something that I'd never really understood as a as a young wee lad. Uh well it looks like well. I can't leave here. I've got I've gotta go back out. Gotta to touch the the teleport to come out next to the chest again. Okay, <laughs> sure. Where it peers around as if anyone knows he's even here. And would you look at that? It's a steering wheel. That's a bit apt. I still love that. I haven't played any golf, but yeah, no, chuck the steering wheel there, you know. It was there the whole time. And what does it do? It turns a pipe. You probably saw a pipe at the, uh, end of the... This, well, where the chest was, so... Now we're back in, but... Let's go visit the pipe. Um... But 
But uh, yeah, no, it's it's still a treat. Uh, I've actually I put in the effort to also buy all the used cars. So the only cars I have left are a handful of. There we go. The only cars left are a handful of um, uh, cars to win from some of the the tournaments that I haven't yet done, and pretty much buying the rest, which. Uh, I'll try my best to get them. Oh, there's bats over there. Is that the chest? I think it's the chest. You got the background over there. I could probably trigger that bird. Nah, it's probably a bit tricky. Oh, oh, I just... You see, there's a guy here. I could... Bounce on the guy. I gotta be cheeky peeky. Or just watch him go. So if I watch him go, he'll walk all the way, right? Yeah. And that'll allow me to knock out these blocks. Watch out for the bat. And that's the green chest? The green chest. I guess I can get the green chest now, I guess. Is that a wall of garlic? Just there. Okay, what's in this door? We gotta keep exploring, I guess. There's a coin. Okay. Yep, I, I didn't I didn't mean to bounce off him. Nope. Stop. Okay, well that's the guy, he's just there. Um other than that, though, it's still been that, so, uh, I guess if I wanted something a bit more interesting to play through, uh, probably gonna have to wait until next week, but I've got some interesting games that I've got queued up, so that'll be good fun. Hmm, because you can't, like, springy bounce over these. Oh. Okay, well. That's where the red chest is. Okay, so just... Repeat once more. Dang it. <laughs> It'd be right up there. Oh, and I zombied. Okay, the, the spring. Nope, he's he's left the building. But the principal, the principal is there. Uh. Uh. <laughs> there we go. The coin up there has me a little worried, but. Yeah. So, uh, what's the controversial topic of today? Uh, controversial topic of today is, uh, I've got two things. One of, uh, these are kind of topics I've already gone through in a fair bit of detail. Um, I feel like that's a harder jump if you couldn't bounce off things. Uh, what actually is in that direction? Because, yeah, if I, like... Launch him up there and get back over there. What am I seeing up here? Is it just going to be a coin? It is just a coin. Well, <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense why it's up out of the way. I don't think I'll be getting the coins because, uh, I guess spoilers on what the coins do. You just get, uh, um, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll mention it a bit. Because there's, there's an appropriate time to mention what the coins do. Squidward zombies really making us run there. Boing, boing, boing. Yeah. Uh, but controversial topic is uh, Forspoken, a game that came out before my last stream, and I just didn't even 
remember mentioning it, but I do remember maybe mentioning it in the past as, oh look, it's a red keycard, in the red chest. That's how you know it's cool. Nice. I don't think the red keycard does anything just yet, I think. Unless I'm going to be proven wrong. No, I don't think it does, no. But, let's go back for that green chest, because it's there. I think the green key was, like, in this direction, wasn't it? Or was, was it the blue key I saw? I'll just double check. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, Forspoken is a game that came out. I didn't even realize it was developed by the, uh, people who made Final Fantasy... No, this was the blue one, I remember. Uh, the people who made Final Fantasy XV. I didn't even realize it's by that same studio. I don't know if it's directed by the same person, but definitely it's got, like, that, um, development team behind and, uh, potentially a creative force. Uh, definitely I think there's a stronger Western vibe to it because it's a open world game, I think. And it's, uh, I guess it's very action-y. And it's got, a obviously, a Western writing style, I guess is the term to say. Um, some people are a bit critical of it, I'll say that. Um, to me, it's... Like, it's not a deal-breaker. It's not a great maker, but it's a... It's not a deal-breaker for me, because I feel like... I feel like this guy's sleeping because it's nighttime, so I gotta wake him up. Um, but yeah, to me, it's like annoying dialogue isn't necessarily a deal breaker for me, but it's also never a selling point for me either. I've never found that like, oh, I should play this game because I will like find it funny. I kind of like games that end up being funny because the games like Postal, which are mechanically funny along with being just writing funny. And I think that's something that perhaps a lot of games struggle to maybe sell themselves on. I'm really curious what's up here. The bats seem like a deterrent. Unless these are like ladders. No, no, I'm pressing up, I'm not touching them, so... What's it doing there? It's clearly gotta be something, because that's where I entered. Best I can think of is that there was another exit in that room I went into, but like, I don't see it. Obviously, if you charge, you're not gonna get anywhere. Uh, yeah, the, um, other than that, I think Forspoken, like, from what I've seen of it is, and this is a very brief bit of what I've seen. So some, so if you if you really like the game, I think more power to you. I don't think there's anything you're really going to get from me trash talking it based on the initial perceptions, but the initial perceptions is what's preventing me from buying it. It's the stuff that I'm kind of going, hey, this is uh, not really blowing my mind. Um, I feel like I need to be the vampire. Oh, because you can fly as the vampire. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, yeah. There you go. But now, yeah, so now I gotta avoid the garlic. The one thing, the one thing as Wario that you think you'd want to be able to do. And now I've also got to get someone up here, so I think I'm probably gonna go this way, touch garlic, and then carry an enemy across. That seems like probably the game. There he is. Okay. So carry him across. Dodge the bats. Um, but yeah, like, from what I've seen, it does look a bit generic -y open world. Nothing really too groundbreaking. Um, the graphics aren't, like, to die for. It still does that weird thing as well, where, like, they need to work on their lighting. Um, because there are games with more stylized lighting out there that hold up over time despite the models and the textures being a bit weaker. Here, it's like the models and textures are a bit more advanced, sure, but the lighting doesn't make it noticeable. You can't really tell when something is clearer, sorry, when something is, you know, more detailed, when it's not 
well lit. This is the same thing with film. And in film... Oh, look at that, you just have to turn the thing on. Oh my gosh. Victory, I've turned off the teleporters. The teleporters are off. Do you kind of like how uh, I went to this level, went back to E5, went back to E7, and now I'm back to E5? That's good fun. So I guess I can go this way now. Nope. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I think some people are also commenting on performance. I can't... I've not tested on my own, but... I will say, like, again... People are having performance issues. It's got one good thing, which is it's got a demo. Like, if you wanna... If, if you're gonna have a game, have, like... Be a thing. Give it a demo. Because otherwise, I have been there before. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'm definitely gonna say, Ooh, I don't know, some people say it runs bad. And I can't test that without buying it. Um... Like, I can do that. I can't carry it down, so... Nope. So what's in here? I assume this warps somewhere else. This is warping somewhere else, okay. Okay, I'm revealing something by breaking these blocks. Oh, this is the other side of that! Okay. Okay, we've got platforms all over the place. I got whatever's going on here. I revealed this one at least. <laughs> oh. Uh, but where is the green chest? Maybe it's through here. Oh. That is a very interesting place for a green chest. It's an actual. Oh my gosh, yeah. So you fall down, and then you gotta. Oh, you just gotta sneak in on the side there. Interesting. Interesting. Someone's gonna say, oh, you played this game 15 years ago. Yeah, I don't remember a thing about this. What? What is this level design? This is, uh, rather interesting. So, alright, very left. Nope. A little more left. A little more left. Um, but yeah, then, uh, introduce Twitter. I know I keep mentioning Twitter. But, uh, it's like, again, no one can have any nuance. Oh, there's so much platform over here. No one can have any nuance. A game is either completely good or completely bad. There's no in-between. I feel like Forspoken falls into the... Mmm... Category of... I don't know if anyone's really gonna, like, crazy remember it. Some people might. But I think in general... It's probably just gonna... Be forgotten. Ooh. Look at that red juice. Pour it on the thing. Squidward. This is back in E7 as well. I think there is, oh sorry, yeah. I think there is a way to get the red key. So maybe it's just in the other direction because I didn't see anything just yet. Uh, there is that guy. I feel like I could probably free him and the red key would be available. Oh look, the warps are gone. So where does this lead? Oh! <laughs> Guess where the red key is! Alright, straight down. There you go. Okay. Maybe it's somewhere on the left. On the right, sorry. <laughs> Amazing. Um... What? Easy. There you go. That's cool. You know, this level is nowhere near as terrifying as, uh... Like, the the one in Wario Land 2. I'll just say that. Well, that's another crayon. I can't recall if this is the last crayon I need. So, okay, crayon colors this again. I don't think it is. Let's 
let's uh, let's just double check this. How many are we at? 78, I've already got eight treasures. Um, yeah, there's one more crayon, it's in there. So. It's one of the remaining ones, don't worry. Uh, okay, time to actually get that blue thing. Greetings, Blob, how's it going? Uh, this stream, I'm talking about for... I was about to say forgotten. Forspoken, it's a, uh, yeah. I feel, I feel like it is mostly average from my perceptions. This is a, yeah, not a, uh, not an official review and also one where I haven't really looked enough into it. Like, there are some people who will base their opinions off lots of critics. I'm here just going, I've seen clips. I've really got no clue. But, I don't think they've done a good job to really sell me on getting it, which is a big issue. Okay, here's a question. Where do you drop? Oh, I guess all the way on the right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I intend to get the remaining 22 treasures. It was 30 when I started the stream, it is now 22 to go. Um, and then beat the game and show you what happens when you beat the game with all the treasures. I don't intend to get the coins, because uh, the reward is not really meaningful. I can describe it. I've done it already, but it's mostly been in this level, the this little forest level. Whoop. Okay, Squidward. Squidward, I need to go right. I should really have, like, an on-screen counter of how many I've gotten. Oh, I've now got to guess where the platform end ends. What? There it is. Because I'm pretty sure, as a zombie, you can walk through here, so... Now I guess the question is where... Ah, oh, it's only 70, yeah. I was thinking, it's like, mm, it's probably just over there, yeah. There we go. I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling really good about, like, getting these treasures out, I'll tell you that. I was worried that I was gonna pull, like, a... a Tomb Raider 2. I'm gonna pull a super duper long stream. Look at that, it's another keycard. Have all the treasures from this level been keycards? Maybe. Look at that, we got the red one. We got the blue one. And what do you know? Down he goes, down and down and down he goes. And where is that? Why well, yes, it's back in this level. So, literally, you get access to E7, and you just gain enough bits from both E5 and E7 to just complete them out, without needing any other reliance. I think it also, yeah, it did require the, uh... Like, the Golden Gauntlets, the best... Well, not the best, but the last item, the last upgrade you actually get, so... I kind of like that, it's good fun. There we go. I feel like I need to just explore around a little bit because I am not 100% sure where exactly that guy was revealed, but this area looks... completely... Could be in here, actually. Oh boy. Oh boy, what am I looking at here? This looks like where he was. Why did it reveal the silver coin? There's no silver coin anywhere. This is... Oh, I guess because the chest is right underneath me. Oh boy. Door. Okay, this is an exit door. Why is there a green coin? Okay. Now we're gonna go through here and realize what I've done wrong. I've gotta be a donut. I gotta donut that. Alright, so... Anyway, Forspoken... Yeah, it's... I don't know, to me, it's... It's... Average looking. And that is probably one of the worst things a game can possibly be. Average. Because... People are not gonna remember it. And bonus points... They're charging 115 Australian for it. They are charging the high amount. Look at that. E. Oh, really? This is... Okay, well, at least I can break this open and not have to do that jump again. Okay, so the chest is there. The chest is there. Um, and uh, I guess I've already kind of gone on about the $115 games before, but I'll repeat it again. Like, if you're going to do $115, you got to, like, be good. 
you, there's got to be a really good reason why your game costs more than the average game. We've had the Dead Space remake come out um, a couple of days ago, and uh, at the very least, 90 bucks, 90 Australian. They're charging the regular price. Uh, bonus points to them as well. They um, they did the pre-order bonus, which was you just get a copy of Dead Space 2, which I fully appreciate. I think, hey, as a pre-order bonus, you should be inviting more people to find out why you love the game that you bought and pre-ordered. And the easiest way is to go, hey, you know, have a copy of the, the first game. Uh, what I heard and seen it had potential, but was squandered by not making use of the gameplay possibilities, enemy AI, stupid AF, for example, as well as terrible writing. I assume this is, uh, Forspoken? Yeah. I did see the one clip of, like, oh, I'm fighting 50 enemies, and, like, barely any of them attacked the player. They were just, like, looking around, going, oh, okay. Um... Like, yeah, that, that did not look impressive. I'm always worried. There's a lot of people just advertising on Twitter. Like, I, I'm like, how many of these people are actually, like, legitimately impressed by the game? And how many of these people are just like... There's probably some people, you know? Like, if this is your only video game you've ever played... I get it, I guess. It's just that it goes viral and you got, like, no clue, like, at all the context. So... A lot of people bait, and a lot of people don't actually know any better. It's a heart shield. First question should be, how many of these people are actually people? That is true as well. It's very easy to just astroturf, you know, social media with a bit of fake promotion. So that's a dead end item. But you know what? That also was every item in those two levels. So that was good fun. Okay, on to the next uh, bit of bit. Town and Chaos. I've got to get the blue treasure. I think I've got the green treasure as well that I can also pick up, but the blue treasure is, uh, the short end one that I'll get. Forspoken is also- yeah, yeah, like, I- I don't know if- I guess US pricing, it's 70 US. Um, and that's just- that just feels worse because, like, I mean, granted, 90 Australian to 115 Australian is also, like, a, a fairly steep increase. They charge the same amount for Final Fantasy VII, um, remake as well on PC. Um... And that doesn't feel very comfortable. That feels like it's a lot of money. Uh, but at the very least, there's been some Epic Games discounts to sweeten the deal a little bit more. Uh, see, now I can... I swear I could ground pound this guy. Uh... 80 euro, it is 70 dollars in the US, yeah. Which, granted, the US is before tax. I don't know if in uh, Germany it's um, got like VAT applied. I don't know if you did VAT. Because here in Australia it's like 115, but that is the price. Taxes included, so um, it would really, like, if you were getting it taxed off, it's like, I don't know, would it be like 103? 102? 103? But like, you, no one gets video games tax free. And, and, like, like the, ta the tax is only for the businesses to, to claim off. And think about it, that's 13 bucks that just goes to the government because you bought a video game. Just feels weird. I don't think too many places besides the US do before tax- Yeah, before taxes, I don't even get. I don't understand before taxes. Because it's just like, I want to know how much this thing is. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Defeat the Grey Frog. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I am such an idiot. You like that, by the way? It's a fun slide move. Yeah, horribly overpriced. I th Square Enix is the only publisher who's willing to push it. And the worst part is that I was a little sympathetic to it because I was like, hey, you know what? I don't mind games being more expensive if, if, and this is a big if, the, uh, if I say predatory, you know exactly what I mean. Uh, but like, if we can do without microtransactions, oh, no, 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 okay. If we can do without microtransactions and DLCs and just release games, like, good. Like, just, just make the game good when it comes out. The problem is, obviously, that's not going to be the case. 
Actually, what am I doing? He needs to be on the lower level. Yeah. There we go. Alright. See, now he's over here. And now he's going to fire his ice through here, which will slide me through his. This is a very... Uh, uh, mm. I'm glad it took me ages to figure that one out. So now, it's a brand new part of the level that we've never seen before. It's got blocks. It's got donut blocks. It's got, uh, enemy needs to be yeeted at this height level. And enemy needs to continue being yeeted. Duh. Uh, but, yeah, like, it's weird because, yeah, I get to mention Dead Space, which, at least on the surface level, Dead Space's remake is kind of as it should be. Game comes out, and it's uh, 90 Australian, which is the, the regular old price. Um, did, I, did I just hit a switch? Maybe I just double hit it just then. Um, and uh, yeah, pre-order bonus, you just get Dead Space 2. That's nice. There's no- there is a deluxe edition. There is that. It comes with a couple of cosmetic skins, but it's ten bucks more? I can- I can accept a skippable ten dollar more cosmetic DLC. Um, I can also skip the fact that there is bound to be no intention to pad it out with extra content or whatever. Microtransactions DLCs, which is hilarious because I know Dead Space 3 has, uh, like, one-time microtransactions as part of the single player. It's like, you can buy materials, which break the game, basically. It's like, the game is designed around just getting the materials normally. Like, I goofed this up for myself. I shouldn't have dropped all the way down. I've got to reset this. Nice. Cool. Um, but yeah, the, the Dead Space remake just seems exactly like... Also, apparently it runs really well. Seems exactly like what a game should really release to be. And it's... Uh, and I love how people say it's a sad state of gaming when games come out and they're, you know, they're released in such a bad state that we have to, like, consider the bare minimum. But, like, real talk, it is kind of... It is kind of a point. It's like, games really shouldn't be coming out in the states that they are coming out in. There's a lot of... And I know there's, like, a lot of hardware configurations. A lot of things you gotta consider, especially when making a game for PC. So why does it lag on the PlayStation? It, the PlayStation should be, you know... No, 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 okay, cool. Your PlayStation should be your safe place. There shouldn't be anything going on with the PlayStation version. Um, okay, I'm gonna need this guy. There we go. Now I'm gonna try my best to guess where they are. Where the donut blocks were. I think they were... Down here? Okay. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Okay. Um, now, to that being said, uh, the internet is not without its controversy. We have to uh, say exactly why the Dead Space remake is terrible. And the answer is because it caters too much to casual players. What do you mean? Why? The game itself... I'm saying this in my quoting voice, not that I actually believe this, but... Uh, uh, the, the, the quote I, I see is that the game has, um, a journalist difficulty, basically. The one bad thing about this game design, long wind up if you miss- Yeah, exactly. And I'm not a big fan of jumps that are off-screen. It is a problem that plagues a lot of Game Boy games because you've got a 160 by 144 resolution. There's not much that you can do about that. Um... Fire. Oh, I just broke the one fire guy, didn't I? Yeah. Oops. And the worst part is that there are two treasures to get, so I know I'm gonna have to be doing this like twice, depending on which one I get. I see the the vampire. That's that's what's like throwing me off there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. I am now a vampire. Okay. Well, how about let's just look over here. Cause like, yeah, what is over here? Okay, I can go up on this ledge. Okay, I could go up on that ledge. Oh, that's how to get to the green chest. Cool, okay. So that makes me think that this is exactly how you get the green. Because it's like... 
We go down here. I didn't think this one through, did I? I uh, yeah, this isn't me missing the jump, this is me... Just completely blanking out on that one, whoops. Whoops! <laughs> I should have looked at that and gone, oh, what, what am I doing here? Because yeah, when I move that up... I don't know if it's going to be visible here, but it's like, that lets me then drop onto it. So I need to make sure the blocks are up before I go back down. And there's a switch in there, so I, I know it's entirely on me. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Dead Space's remake has also calling it Dead Space. I know it's a remake, but <sighs> we got to do the whole thing of calling it Dead Space 2023. You know, Doom 2016 is formally called Doom 2016 in uh, Doom Eternal, because, like, you have to now refer to it in, with some kind of extra text. There's no other way that you're going to be able to refer to that game. It's such a pain, also. Um, but, uh... Yeah, the journalist difficulty is kind of like, eh. You know, like, I get it. I don't really like it. It's like, there's a degree of a game should not sway too hard from the designer's original vision. And I feel like by making the game too... I forgot to do it again! I forgot to do it again! Oh my gosh, I'm... I'm an idiot. I'm actually an idiot. This is where all the stream time goes, just this one, this one. I swear. Um... But, uh... Yeah, I, I feel like... Your easy difficulty can't be too easy. That, that line is drawn depending on just the game. I can't say all easy difficulties are bad, because I personally really enjoy Guitar Hero. And Guitar Hero has such a large skill window. You can't, like, get rid of easy difficulty in Guitar Hero because people need easy difficulty to get into the game. But Expert is clearly where the game is meant. Uh, oh wait. That's probably my problem, is that I'm bouncing off the guy and they've clearly got a bit here. Ah, oh, this is double my problem. Because I'm supposed to use the fire guy to... Get all the way up here. Okay. Let her rip. Age of Empires 2 got new AI with the HD edition. Is it easier? I mean, I, I'm, I don't mind if it's smarter as well. They kept the old one in, the old one is a joke. So that's, that's the thing. I don't mind them making the game harder or more, like, consistent. Like, that's... that's I, I welcome change when, especially if you keep the old one in there. Because then it means that, hey, you know, people get the option to still go with it. And I know I just said that saying Dead Space's, like, difficulty mode is clearly, like, not the only difficulty mode. The old difficulties are still there. And they've also got a new game plus mode, which is nice. Uh, I've so, oh, I've got to move the, um, the block down. I've got to be above and then move the block down. Um, I mean, it's like me, I still suck against, like, the Civ AI, and people are probably like, oh, dude, the, the Civ 5 AI is, like, so bad. Like, you can poke holes at it so much, and I'm just like, I don't know, it kind of whoops my butt still. There's something fun about the mystery of the AI, and how it cheats. The game I had new AI, even when I was a kid, even on easy. Exactly, we're gonna be so ruined by, like, newer games when their AIs are way too good. Oh, I'm glad that block was telling me that uh, there was um, a green key there. Okay, so now all I've got to do is get up to the top and then Batman. And not waste any time. Uh, all those magical memories I have of Age of Empires 2 from when I was a kid. Those would have happened. Exactly, exactly. And I feel like, like, games, especially, I guess, original versions of games, it's like, there's something magical to how original versions of games, like, play. That's why I do appreciate Nintendo for just releasing old games. They released, you know, when, when they do, when they do, that is. Um, but they released, like, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. 
in as like raw a state as possible. The one thing they did was they updated the uh, link cable mechanic to just work with the 3DS's online. But that game, oh, and they also changed Jinx to be purple. But like that game, warts and all, is exactly as it is on the 3DS. Um, so uh, you got the good stuff like uh, Dire or Focus Energy doesn't work. It goes the opposite way. Um, I had a friend nine. Uh, he had a SNES and was able to consistently play through Mega Man X in one setting. Ooh, very nice of him. Very nice. Uh, so I got the green key. I was not expecting the green key, but sure, okay. I got this eye. Oh, fun fact. Uh, I'll say this right now. Uh, there are a handful of games I played and I never really released on my channel way back in the day. Goldeneye for the Wii was one of them. One day I'll play it. But I gotta be careful with YouTube's new uh, strictness thing, which leads me on to point number two of Dead Space. It has a uh, content warning notice setting. It's off by default, but you can have a thing that prompts you, watch out, you're about to get jump scared, which just feels like odd. You don't need a uh, difficulty for children. Children, yeah, children will kind of enjoy what they get. Um, and that's not to say that, like, there's no, like, you know, like, level of quality for kids, but kids are much less likely to, like, call up on it. Why does this go all the way down? Yeah, I just remember that the, the blue key is, like, in this, like, weird room. You remember ages ago when I first went to this level? And it's just like, yeah, that's the blue key. It's just up there. So I think... There's the chest. My opinion is that if the game is rated not more than 12, it should have some difficulty for little kids. It should, and, and I don't mind games being easier, and especially as well, like, you know, like, my <laughs> inevitable point of... The game should be, like, accessible for, uh, sorry, it should be within the creator's vision. That can still include the easier difficulties. I, m my point on, like, a difficulty that definitely doesn't feel right is, uh, the original Doom, 1993 Doom, the very, very easy difficulties are just, they, f they feel wrong. They, the game just doesn't feel like it's designed for that. Um, at least if it's a strategy game, mind you, for RPGs like Pokemon or Final Fantasy, the ability to grind levels is the easy mode. Uh, exactly! RPGs kind of are already built for that. Because it's just like, yeah, you can put in time or effort. Oh, dang it. Well, I mean, I got a break. Nope, E is just gone. Okay. Um, I feel like the best RPGs, I really like, uh, you know, it's a one day I'll, I'll finish Legend of Heroes, I'll tell you that. But I really like how that game does it, where the difficulty level is dynamic, in the sense of every time you die, it just makes that encounter like 10% weaker. And so, if you're under level, you're going to be finding that with like every encounter, but it does give you enough of like a push to like be like, okay, yeah, I get it, let's, let's move on, like that kind of stuff, you know? I feel like if I do this, he'll stop at some point. Nope. Nope. Dang it. I didn't want to, like, light throw him, but he is actually gone. He's actually gone. Um, but I also feel like, yeah, RPGs should usually have just leveling as, uh, kind of a soft crutch to get through them. Um, now that being said, I know I played Dragon Quest 1 on my stream a bit ago, and in that, Grinding is kind of the game, <laughs> but you know what? It kind of embraces it. It's, it's okay. Um, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. So now, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> was a little, a little terrifying there. So now I've got that, which means if I go over here, we're good. I can pick up this goods, these goodies. I lost count of how many treasures I picked up. I think I picked up 11. Which, uh... What are we? 54 minutes into the stream? 11 is... 
Maybe a bit on the slower side, but sure, okay. Turnip. Uh-oh, the squid ate the turnip. Now he's angry. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, no, Dead Space has the content warnings, and the content warnings do feel like they are antithetical to kind of what a horror game should be. You should be uncomfortable, you should be disturbed by it. And if you really, really are uncomfortable with, um, like, uh, you know, depressive themes and that kind of stuff, I feel like that's on the box, and the SRB does a really good job of like, shouting out, hey, this game has this kind of stuff, before you buy it. Once you've bought it, and you're playing it, I feel like, kind of, you know... Is there any, like, payoff if you get warned that there's a thing like that? Um, and on top of that, there, I believe there is a setting which blurs the gore. Which is kind of like, isn't that the whole, not the whole point of the game, but... I think, I think the treasure is bound to be somewhere in here. There's the angry squid. I assume these guys are gonna, like, take me out to the, the top of the screen. We're gonna deal with bubbles? Maybe. Uh... <laughs> okay, well, it's not as bad as I thought, but it's still kind of gnarly. Oops. Oops. Um... So, these settings seem kind of weird. Because it's like, on the one hand, it's like... You know, I've had this recur- okay, cool, that's where the- ah. Oh. On the one hand, I've had this recurring thing about accessibility settings, or difficulty settings being descri- sorry, being, uh, disguised as accessibility settings, and it ends up just being a marketing point. These- I don't know if they were marketing points, although I guess we still got that, uh, well, people on Twitter are saying it, and therefore are buying the game because of it, or at least claiming they are buying the game because of it. I don't know. Some people are going, how, how great is it for, for accessibility? Uh, but I saw someone's take which actually made a lot of sense of, like, why would you warn the player about, like, jump scares or stuff like that? Why would you warn, why would you blur out the gore? And I realized it's because streamers, streamers have to deal with YouTube and, and, I don't know if Twitch is doing this now, but, like, they have to deal with, like, content ID, not, not content ID, but, like, these filters are now going through and trying to say your video is, like, not safe for, for kids. Scrolling through my YouTube feed, there was a video title, Spoken as a $20 game disguised as a $70 game. I always feel like it's hard to, like, easily justify value in a game because, um, difficulty has its chance. Yeah, because it's just, like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of games where it's just like, yeah, we've had easier difficulties already be a thing. And sometimes games don't want to have easier difficulties. Um, and that's okay, but it's like, yeah, why are we expecting every game to cater for everyone? Elden, Elden Ring's a perfect example, because it's like, it's the one difficulty and so many people are doing it. So many people are getting through it. So, um, I don't see there being any issue for a game to not have the difficulty, like, you know, exposed like that. Um, but, yeah, the, the whole thing, I guess, of, like, streamers are gonna play Dead Space, and they kinda want the best shot of not getting the video flagged, demonetized, all that stuff, so here's a setting that warns the viewers that something's about to happen. Here's a setting that warns, or that pr protects the video from getting absolutely flagged by YouTube. Um... Oh, exactly. Like, like, Elden Ring has mechanics to make the game so much easier. Um, I still think there is a degree of... Well, it doesn't really tell you it, but... Um, I think it's it's easy for us to go, the game, like, feels like it is still the creator's vision, even though there are things that make the game easier. Nothing sways from the creator's vision, whereas, like, you know, enemies deal half damage. It's easy to look at that and go, is that kind of, you know, against the whole point of the game? And the answer is maybe, but, um, yeah, exactly, if, if you're not, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I tried as well playing Skyrim on, like, that difficulty, and it's just like, it's not, it's not designed for, for that. Skyrim's actually a great example of, like, both ends of the difficulty, like, barrier is just, like, it's so, um, 
like, you know, it's too easy on one difficulty, and it's too hard on the other. Um, or at least it's too hard except for stealth, is kind of the whole point of the game, so... Um, sorry, stealth is the only way you can do anything in the game if you make the combat too hard. So it's just like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it, it's not a, it's not a great difficulty, uh, you know, way in the game. I think, I think if anything, they should really just release these games with the one difficulty. It, I, I, I don't mind it, like, the way it, it is by default. Oh! <sighs> we'll get there eventually. Um... But yeah, I, I mentioned the original Doom because the original Doom has, uh, effectively three difficulty levels. Where, um, Ultra Violence is the hard difficulty, Hurt Me Plenty is the medium one. I think Hurt Me Plenty is, like, bang on, like, that is kind of what the game should be played as, mostly, for a first-time playthrough. And then Ultra Violence is definitely how the game is. I took a hit and still kept going. Um, Ultra Violence is how the game is meant to be played. There's two more difficulties on top of- that's the blue one. I've got the blue one. I don't have the blue one, though. Um... In that case, then, it's one of the other doors. One of the other myriad of doors. Um... But then, Doom also has one difficulty above- Well, it's got the easy difficulty, which is, like, too easy in my eyes. And then it's got the difficulty above that, which is the same, but you take half damage, and the ammo is twice as plentiful. And I feel like that difficulty is kind of along the lines of... That's not really how the game is meant to be played. And we can easily see, like, the amount of damage you get dealt just doesn't feel right. Meanwhile, Nightmare, on the inverse side, and Nightmare isn't there, like, when the game first came out, by the way, fun fact. It was patched in. Um... Okay, please be green chest in here. Please be green chest in here. I feel like I'm on the back end of something. Uh... Maybe I just need this guy to like- oops. I'm thinking probably just a wall that's breakable from the yarn. Cause I'm thinking like, there's no other doors I've been in, so... Um... But yeah, now that being said, with Dead Space having the stream mode, or Earth Defense Force games have five difficulties, the three lower ones are basically the ones intended for the first playthrough, depending on how familiar. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like there's um, appropriate space for like, if there's a, a meaningful way to have these difficulties. Um, but again, like, it depends on the creator's kind of vision of the game. Enemies get more health. Yeah, I don't mind enemies getting more health, but there is a, like, yeah, there's a- I mean, Skyrim's our perfect example of, like, going too far in one direction. Um... I'm trying to recall, there's a game I played... ...where it's like, the hard difficulty is just... ...absolutely nutty. There's, like, no reason. Um... Racing game, I feel. Yeah. We got the red... the red... acid? Uh, you get stronger weapons, more damage, more splash, more range, so... ...in the end, the time to kill for the average enemy is still the same. Yeah, that's kind of the fun part as well of uh, a lot of these games where um, they uh, they have these difficulty levels, but they kind of balance their way out in some way. So anyway, I believe uh, what was that 84? 84. Okay, I'm actually 14 into the into the stream out of 30. That's actually pretty pretty okay. So uh, now I've got to go to. Here, the Tower of Revival. Okay, can you remember where on earth I need to go? I think, uh... Okay, I got it. Just gets harder to dodge because more projectiles. Yeah, and that's kind of what Doom is kind of like as well, where it's like, just more enemies means it's harder to... Um, to not get hit, but it's not impossible. It's never impossible. 
And the amount of ammo they actually give you balances it out decently well, so I like it. The other part is they mix up enemy placement spawns and even types of missions, and high difficulty for like any shield bearers for high difficulty. That's kind of cool. I actually, that's like, um, Thief. If you ever play Thief, that game is delish with how harder difficulties do add more guards, and enemies take more damage, and you have less health, but you've also got to do more stuff in order to beat the level. You've got to take more money, you've got to, like, possibly find important goodies. There's a lot of fun things with, like, how that game works. Thief is a great game. Always would recommend. Um... Okay, so there's that... There's... I forgot if it was the donuts first or the... Zombie first. I think it's the donut first. to get in high difficulties are also more fun. I appreciate that as well. That's good fun. Uh, I've got, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe actually, that's, I don't know, maybe I just gotta keep going up actually. I'm just thinking like, oh, that, I don't remember there being any other exits that way. There are cl classes that can spawn in vehicles. Those get better handling, faster movement, faster acceleration, faster turret rotation. It actually kind of reminds me, if you ever play, um... Well, I mean, one day I'll probably play Ratchet & Clank on this channel, but Ratchet & Clank has, like, uh, the New Game Plus mode, or it has the hard... I think it's got a hard difficulty setting. Like, after you beat the game. But you also New Game Plus your way into it. So it's like, you gotta go through with overpowered weapons. EDF on higher difficulties is more fun. Um... Like, yeah, there's, there's fun ways of just, like, making the game a bit harder, but just, like, going for it, so... Um, so yeah, I remember this is where the green chest was. So I think I just gotta wander in some direction, and I'll eventually find the, uh, the blue. Whoop. Okay. But I think, like, lower difficulties as well, like, they are important if... It's too dawning on the higher difficulties. But on a per game basis, like that's where you gotta you know draw the line. You gotta you gotta figure out like, is this game easy enough or hard enough on this difficulty? Oh my gosh, I just wanna go down. This is where I need to go. This is the door. Okay, there's the key. There's the key, so now I need to just get the key? Yeah, like that. Okay. Draw. Oh, he's bouncing, he's going. Uh, with the latest EDF of the game, they made it so you can no longer access two high dis highest difficulties without beating the game. As people commonly thought those beatable on the first. Ah, yeah, yeah. Whoop. Whoop. I actually, I feel like when I, uh,. When a game's, like, difficulties are locked behind, like, I would prefer the bit to be, like, a cheat code or something to, like, unlock it, but I also completely... I guess that's an interesting one as well, like, yeah, technically, like, games with hard modes, but they're locked off because they want you to play the game normally the first time. As long as there's a way to maybe, like, hey, I just downloaded this game on a different machine, can I have, uh, you know, <laughs> this mode unlocked by default? Um, which... Grants me this one this one point about uh, the whole point of like accessibility setting difficulty settings where it's like oh like what if some people are incapable of beating the game at a certain like difficulty I then go why do games not have cheat codes in order to beat the game like why 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 can you not just jump to the end of the game nowadays you have to play for the whole game right so if you want the game to be journalist mode difficulty why. What's the point? And to that, I don't have an answer. I don't actually have an easy answer. Uh, if they made it 
uh, so that you beat a uh, hard or normal, the difficulty is lower, would also get to the completion. That is nice, and I appreciate games that do that. Oh, I, I've been killing the worms <laughs> on the way. Uh, I still know I have some cheat codes from Age of Empires and Age of Mythology. Uh, IDKFA eternally remains my head, as well as also, uh... I was gonna say the, the Konami code, that's, uh, super, super basic, super normal. There's, uh, what's like a good cheat code off the top of my head? Robin Hood Legend of Sherwood Forest. I don't let's get the worm just lower in the in the stage. What am I doing here? Just just move him down, bro. Alright, worm. Do your thing. There we go. Good stuff. Greed is good. Warcraft 3. Greed is good. Yes. But yeah, like, I feel like, yeah, if like We've always kind of had cheat codes until games started to monetize beating them as a main, like, selling point, apparently. Look at that, it's like a golden key. It's kind of cool. So look at that, it's, it's just, there's a lock. There was a lock right there the whole time, did you notice? And at the top of the tower, because that's where I went, above the clouds. So, you know where we're going. Above the clouds. I love me a good sky level. Is this actually, is this the golf game? It's been forever since I've played the golf game. Finally, we've got more golf game. Oh, that was a bit rough. Hitman 3 got a new game. Oh yeah, okay. Hitman 3, I was like, I remember it was a bit messy like when it first came out because I don't know what I owned and what I didn't. I have Hitman 1 Game of the Year Edition and Hitman 2 Somewhat Edition. And, uh, cool. Uh, and, uh, now I do not know what of Hitman 3 I own. Because Hitman 3 has tried to simplify the bundle, but people might have owned various bits of bundle before. Like me, so. They accidentally patched the most famous and beloved speedrunning glitch when they improved the engine. Ah, oh, no! They've still got the homing briefcase, right? Everyone likes timed platforms. That's, yep. This is some fun music that's just here, you know? Uh, in the patch notes, I already apologize and promise to patch back in the particle boost. Yeah, I feel like there is a degree of, again, is it the creator's vision? Like, I'm a little bit sympathetic to game designers because there's a lot of, like, there are good examples of, like, speedrunning glitches are just like, oh please, actually, like, that kind of ruins the game. If you can accidentally just uncover this glitch fairly easily, sure. It depends on the glitch, though. But yeah, if, if, the, if the developers love the glitch, yeah, sure, keep it and enshrine it. Um... But yeah, uh, again, from my external, uh, bit of, uh, dead space looking at, uh, one thing I absolutely love, and I'm amazed that, like, games nowadays have to be the ones to, to do it, uh, it's got this wonderful mechanic where, um, like, when you keep going through the game, there's no loading screens, you just keep going into the newer sections of the game, which, understandable, makes sense. They've also got, like, uh, a little tram fast travel, and I think it's in the original somewhat, but, uh, instead of basically just having maps and loading that, the, the fast travel tram just kind of keeps you in the tram, you're just still right in the tram, and eventually, uh, it does not make the game easier. Yeah, yeah, like, if the glitch is hard, I'm more okay with it, but yeah, my only, like, thing with glitches is, like, when they are accidentally discovered in a, like, too easy sense, like, um, like, uh, the Spyro 2 kind of shift, like, charge jump. That one's a bit easy to find out. That one's really easy to find out. I don't mind them patching that for the the remaster. Gosh, timed timed platforms. The bane of my existence. Oh no no no. Okay. Phew, phew. And now I gotta get oh, 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 oh. <sighs> I 
Um, but yeah, they've got the, the tram that doesn't kick you into a loading screen. It just kind of keeps the game going. Again, Metroid Prime. It's already existed. Now here's the bit that blows my mind. When you load the game, you know, logo, stuff like that, and then, oh my gosh. Um, and then you have loaded to where you saved, but there's a main me- oh my gosh. There's a main menu. Dude, yeah, Warrior is massive right now, I swear. I'm enjoying this area so much. Pizza Tower came out. That's a uh, if you if you like Warrior Land, some guy really loves it so much. He basically made a uh, kind of speedrunny indie game. But I love his art style, so uh, check that one out on Steam. It's actually got fairly good reviews right now, just from user reviews. So I remember actually seeing his um, trailers like leading up to it. So uh, that deserves to be a good mention, especially appropriate given that I'm playing Warrior Land right now. Oh my gosh! Just let, let me hit him. Let me just hit the guy! These are actually, like, horrendously precise... They're not, like, crazy precise jumps, but it's the fact that you gotta deal with these diagonal shooters. Oh my gosh. I'm struggling so much on this. Okay. He shot. He shoots. Okay, he shoots. I'm gonna jump over the shot. Okay, I'm free. I'm out. Now I just go down, right? Because the chest is just, like, down here. Cool. Okay. Phew. Phew! Whew! Oh my god. <laughs> it's another crayon! Hang on, wait a minute. That's right! It's the, uh, the last crayon, I think. Hello there, Mr. Crip. How's it going? So with that crayon, finally, the mound is colored green. It took all those colors. What does that mean? It means, and uh, I can demonstrate this. So if you go all the way back, to between the West and the North Worlds. Wario actually stops here. He's prompting you. And if you go in, you can play any of the three golf courses for 50 coins. These are actually a set of golf courses, I believe, as well. So, um, yeah, there's actually some, like, you can do some best scores if you want to play all the, the golf. So there is a question mark here. You may be wondering, what's the question mark? Guess what the reward for all the, the music note coins is. Yeah, that's right. You get the fourth golf course. It's definitely a, a, a fun little bonus there. Um, interestingly, it's locked behind getting all of those crayons. Um, especially because, yeah, you can probably just ignore ever getting any of those crayons. Uh, if you do not take account of the problem with the leg, then it's fine. The leg? What happened to the leg? This level might be easier to see in the daytime. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Up. Yeah, I just noticed the, the jump here. There we go. Oh, just up I go. The problem with the finger. The problem with the leg, the problem with the finger. Oh, no, nah, my man. If it's your leg and finger, rest up on that. I actually remember, I like jolted my toe like a couple of months ago and it's still just like not quite there. I can still walk on it, I do not know if I could run on it, but it's just like, eh. Fortunately, I don't do too much that involves a toe. Ah, oh, it's got divided, so. Okay, well that's the red chest. I'm worried I'm jumping the gun. Again, lots of projectiles and kind of timing related stuff here, oh my goodness. Again, could I even get through that? I don't think I can. So, I guess I'll just keep uh, going this way, I guess. This might be a whole room full of... Yeah, okay, that looks promising. But that doesn't. <laughs> I assume I can't take them both out. Well, what's the point in coming up here then? To take out that one block. 
take out that one block. Yeah. Uh... There you go. Oops. Whoa. Don't want to fall too far. But, yeah, I, I really like that idea of, like, minimizing the actual loading by loading your save. Because you've got a save loaded. Why, why do games... GTA is one of the... GTA 5 is one of the worst offenders where it's like, okay, start the game, you have an unskippable logo. Then it loads to the main menu. The stream is the first time in my life I see Warrior with gameplay with the length is more than a few minutes. This game's great. This game deserves the long sessions, I swear. And this is, I mean, this is why I like doing these long streams, just because, like, these games deserve to be, you know, commentated on in these long sessions. There's too many YouTubers. This is my, this is my riff. The reason why I'm playing Monster Hunter World, so many, ah, oh, yeah. I, unskippable cutscenes are just, like, the bane of my existence, especially, like, when you play the game again. Am I, am I fine? Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's all good. Well, it, it almost is all good, except I need to get this guy up here. <laughs> I don't think he's getting up here. I think I've got to go back and break the break the bricks, and then I've got to do two rounds because I'm going to drop down on that side. Uh, this one's a... Blendo did the thing out of order again. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I love doing these longer streams because, uh, like, I feel like there's a lot of YouTubers out there that... Uh, only do like the short 10 minute video or the 15 minute video or uh, like highlight streams or that kind of stuff. I like, I think there is a place for them, but I also feel like there is a place to just like have a long session, just play the game, not have anything like too wacky going on, you know, chats on the side, games in the middle. And you just go for it. So that's the kind of format I guess I've always kind of grown up and watched on YouTube, I guess. Like, uh, like Proton John ages ago, and uh, just kind of how, how people did it back in like 2008, and I've never grown up from that, apart from I do it live now. That's it. So now I get the key, and I gotta do this trek all over again. <laughs> sure. It's not like a, a right or a wrong way to play content on the internet, but... I don't know. I, I, I don't do it for money, and therefore all the, uh, the money aggregating tactics, um, are kind of moot on me. It's like, I don't really make short videos, and I don't really make videos that, like, have clickbaity thumbnails or titles. I just name all my streams the name of a song where, like, one word is something slightly relevant to the, um, to, like, the game I'm playing. That's it. That's all, that's all it is to it. I've been doing that for like two years, so it's like, oh, okay. Fire extinguisher, apparently I'm digging my own grave and I need to set it, uh, get the fire out, I guess. Look at that fire! If only you could put it out! Who needs a flood when you've just got like a handy dandy fire extinguisher? This is a Mario fire extinguisher. Pretty sure there's probably more Mario games with that. Look at that, it reveals, uh, two bits here, so. So I think I've got a E6 as my next blip to, to go to, because that's one of them. So now I've got to figure out where was the fire, and I don't think there's anything up. I think I remember doing one, yeah, I only got one treasure in this level and I just kind of ditched. This is going to be good fun, got to get this guy out of the way. Nope, never mind. Or the barrel, the barrel. Uh, um, but yeah, I actually, I really enjoy as well, like, how there are, you know, like, I mean, I, I mentioned the Dead Space remake, but it's like, there are still games that are being something for a certain crowd. Unfortunately, I, well, not unfortunately, but like, the Dead Space remake might be a weird, like, you know, trend, we'll see, of the remake of the game that is not old enough to necessarily, like, feel like it needs, like, a remake. I said, like, three times or something. But you know what I mean? It's like, Dead Space is not a 
antiquated game. It kind of, you should look at the video uh, Rataskir, R Rataskir, made about the Demon Souls remake. Yeah, I think Demon Souls is probably in the same boat, where it's like, it's a good enough game. And in fact, I keep looking at it and I keep saying, that's just like a more visual enhancement on a game that already kind of exists and does fine. Imagine being torn apart by Fire Squad and just looks like a races. You do it in a comical way, like it's... it's uh, he talks in depth about why it was a faithless... Faithless, ooh. I, I definitely saw gameplay of it, and then I was surprised at how, like, you know, like, the same it was, I guess? Um, and it's kind of like, why exactly do we need, like, remakes of games, um, that already work? And the answer is, HD graphics, I guess. Investors wanted to sell money, they have a license, they want to release a game on that license. One of the easiest things to do is just release that game, I guess. Environmental st storytelling in the Souls fans is always important. They completely change messages the game world tells you. Ah, oh, that's not fun. Uh... I don't remember what kept going in this direction. I think I did. This is where the, the, the gray chest was. I remember I got rid of that guy, so... I could probably take out this guy. Am I right here? But why? What do I gain by going in here? It's like DLC is repeating assets from the main game, but worse. Remakes of new games and... Yeah, I feel like the Dead Space remake might be the start of the trend of, yeah, the soulless, not the soulless, I irony, I guess, Demon Souls is kind of that as well, but, yeah, the remake that doesn't need to exist. What do we gain out of Dead Space as a remake? You can still just buy the original and play it on PC, and you might be able to get away with playing the PS3 version. It definitely looks better, and I will still accept a game that looks better, but... It's just like, uh, the original still just kind of exists. You know, up to you, depending on your view of it, you don't really need the new one. So, uh, when in truth, we know that one NPC story the down for the land took less than a decade. Okay, so I need fire, and I need the key as well while I'm at it. Yeah, okay. Have you ever heard about Paradox? What did Paradox do this time? They keep- they always end up in the news. They always keep ending up everywhere. They have terrible, like, they have great and terrible DLC models. They have tried their best to absolutely, like, do bizarre things with their DLC. Crusader Kings is just like, oh my gosh, like, I don't even mind the Crusader Kings one, like, at that scale of DLC, but it's also like, oh, like, why did I have to get to that point, you know? I'm, I'm like, fully burnt out of, like, City Skyline DLC. I'm like, you know, some of it's okay, and some of it's just painfully average. I need to be able to, like, get in there. Can I get this guy to just, like, go down just a little bit? There we go. That doesn't really do much, though, because... That just means I can get this coin. Uh, they changed their DLC policy, at least for their grand strategies. Because, yeah, it used to be, what, every nine months? It would be a, like, $26 DLC. They even retroactively patched all the old race packs, the Star Arsenal. Uh, all are not just cosmetic, but add gameplay. Ah, okay, because, yeah, they used to also sell the cosmetic part of the DLCs as a completely separate thing, and I thought, that's kind of odd. At least a grand strategy with AI sits and watches how the paint dries. Classic paradox. Classic. Okay. Why is there a snake here? What's the snake doing? He's just chilling. Oh, because now I can go back and get the, um... Yeah, this is going to be a tricky one to jump up and get to. Actually, it's not going to be a tricky one because I can just crawl over here. Uh, 
Yeah, sure, I could do this. Nope, he just bounced all the way back out. Nope. You're gonna, you're gonna go over there and you're gonna like it. There you go. Alright, it, he can crawl, he can crawl to the under bits. Alright, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> nope. You're coming this way. Coming this way. Alright. <laughs> We've gotten to where we need to be. I mean, in Hearts of Iron 4, Bot at least tried to defend his ports from naval invasions. But here, France can send a whole army. It's okay, now I gotta be on fire. Uh, <laughs> France can send a whole army to fight for oh man while at war with Britain. They just do that. They just they just think that's a good idea. I feel like it's not a glamorous job doing AI for these like absolutely massive games. But it's also like, yeah, like, uh, you know, you've made your game massive, you've got to do your, your best with making an AI there. And you got to do a good job, so. And there we go, it's a shield? It's an NVIDIA shield, actually, didn't I already get one? I think it's another one of the dead end ones. By the way, now you're looking at it as you're going, oh yeah, it's a golf course in the picture. Yeah, so. Alright, back to- how about let's, uh, go to the menu and just jump to the- to the west map. Easiest way to get back here. Okay. Oh, I am on fire! I'm thinking there's a bit where I can ground pound right there. I don't think I've been there since I could ground pound that. Did I get? Nope. We've still got two chests here as well. So. Okay, what was down here? Train track? No, I definitely remember doing this. But I don't remember if there was a split path at the end or it just kind of gave you the chests that you needed. I don't think you were able to do this while you could jump high. That kind of just defeats the whole purpose being able to jump by. Talking about Monster Hunter World, perfect time to relax and do all the boring quests while I watch your stream. Exactly. Exactly. This is like a podcast stream. You get to enjoy the podcast, like killing x ball monsters or gather x Y is boring after the first time. I'm always, like, interested in just, like, how many games have I played that do have that kind of stuff, I say as I played Gran Turismo 4, and I'm like, ooh, I want to collect all 730 cars. And 48 of them are Nissan Skylines. On me. Oh, I can't. I, I, I'm, I'm trapped in this existence. No, 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 no. Okay, good. Oh, that's that's for the great key. Uh, did you collect all the Kokoro seeds? I did. I did collect all the Korok seeds. I got that golden piece of dung. My life is complete. That one was mildly interesting because every Korok seed was some weird, like, permutation of challenges. I really did appreciate, like, what I ended up having to do. It was, it was, like, very surreal, the fact that it went on that long. Yeah, is there something, I guess I could push that guy up and then keep going up. Did I go up here before? This feels a bit too shallow, so maybe it's... Red key. Don't need the red key, I need the green key. Dang it, where is the green key? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, apparently I just completely missed it. Uh, that game is amazing. Yeah, I, I still think Breath of the Wild, like, some people will rip on it a lot, but, like, that game deserves as much love as at least I can give it. Because I don't, I don't love open world games, and yet I love Breath of the Wild. They've done something so miraculous to make that happen. And we've got a sequel coming out in a few months. May. My life is going to be empty again. <laughs> because I need to click... More Korok seats. <laughs> I need to do it, so. 
I sadly, I never finished it, could never really get into it. The combat takes time and love. That, that is how I'd describe it. You need to, like, acknowledge that you're gonna get caught out, and that's okay. You just gotta, like, embrace running out of stuff and running away from stuff and retreating and just picking up your pieces and going for it and just finding more stuff and returning to the things that are working out. Um, that's the, the kind of principle I, I felt worked okay. Any reason why this is really perilous? There's enemies. This is this is getting a bit a bit silly. Am I on the side with the chest or am I on the side? Oh no, the keys over here. Okay. Okay, so the keys there. I assume the chest is just in the other direction then, like where the the gap is right here. Oh. Whoops. Whoopsies. But, that's what a, I feel like, hey, check it out, Breath of the Wild has a, a hard difficulty as well. And the hard difficulty I feel like just isn't quite the game. It doesn't feel quite right to me. You can play it, it's fine, but yeah, I, I just prefer the regular difficulty. I do like the changes, I do like that it isn't just you take more damage, it is like, um... Enemies have different, like, equipment, and there's more just random chests all over the place. There's a bit of that, which I appreciate, but then it's like, yeah, I am just getting caught out by, like, various early enemies, and I'm having to cheese the, uh, the fact that I've got bombs and stasis and, and, uh, kinesis, like, things that don't require resources. When you were so bored, you tried to code a game without knowledge of how to work in graphing again, with the point trying to print text on the screen. That, that does happen quite a bit. The problem with the combat with controls and dodging. The, the dodging is rather like, you gotta, you gotta figure it out. There's no easy way of going about it. Uh, especially, I can never consistently um, do the, uh, the like quick time dodge. Where it's like you dodge at just the right time and it does the, the matrix slow down. I can never quite get that right, so. It's a tricky one. Look at that! It's a brick! It's a brick. Where on earth have I been needing a platform? That's right, the Castle of Illusions. Yet again. Okay, well, uh, back to... Back to that one. There we go. To the Castle of Illusions. This level's good fun. I feel like I need to speak retrospectively about this game now that I'm, like, you know, 97 minutes, 98 minutes into the stream. Um, and, uh, I feel like I'm at, what, 10 treasures to go? 11. 11 treasures. But it's like, that's 11 out of 100, I'm starting to get to that point, so... In, in kind of retrospect, this game I have been preferring over Warrior Land 2, and to be honest, I, like, I think I remember seeing someone play this game and just kind of, I was like, I want to play games on YouTube, and I want to get a, I think I played like just a couple of like, oh, well, everyone plays Donkey Kong Country, and I don't know why I did like one video of me playing Cruising USA terribly. Um, I have since redeemed at least Cruising USA, and uh, at least for the rest of the Warrior Lands, like, I feel like I've played the game in a much more genuine way, and my kind of enjoyment and my wonder for what the game was initially has kind of grown a bit. Like, I'm looking at it now going, like, this game is a bit of a masterpiece. It is kind of as good as maybe some people will recollect for it. And it came out in 2000. It's not the earliest kind of game, but it is, like, you know, just a treat and what it wants to accomplish and what it is and how there's very few games that try to be like it. It's it's just a weirdly unique title. Like, just think about it, like, a, a platformer where you can't die. And they made two of them. And they're both great. 
Okay, we got the owl. The owl makes sense. Alright, so obviously he's not gonna get over there. Uh, he's not gonna go up. I need to throw something to break the platform. Okay, this this isn't the right way to go, so there must be something. But not that, yeah, like... Like, and, and I guess that's the thing that is gonna irritate me about, like... I remember that irritating me about uh, Warrior Land Shake It, the Wii one. Uh, cause it's just like... You wanna transcend to Atlantis. Exactly. Makes it super accessible for children. Exactly! But yet, yeah, this game is... Tough. This game is, like... Rather tricky. He might be on the, the, um, underside platform. Oh, well, not this far down. Whoops. Um, but yeah, like, like, it, it, I mean, when I was talking about how a difficulty can, you know, be the creator's vision, not having death shifts the challenge to something very different and very unique. The challenge comes from learning the world and just experimenting and going and finding these combinations of power-ups and wacky kinds of things to make it all work out. And that's super neat. And that's what I feel like maybe Warrior Land 4, at least from my memory, I was like, uh, it's a bit more straightforward, a bit more platform. You know? Uh, I feel like this guy... So, okay, I can now owl this way. Uh, as a kid, I had Super Mario World for the GBA, and I put it over the SNES game. Over. Yeah, that one's that one's definitely one where it's like, even yeah, same for me. As a as a kid, I played I think Mario World on the Wii Virtual Console, and I was like, yeah, I've got like, it's it's tough. It is tough. I I will 100% admit Mario World is not very easy. It seems simple, but it is like tricky because Mario is... It's tight. It throws a fair bit of stuff at you. So... But that's okay. That's okay. I feel like, if anything, the, the newer ones feel easier just because they're a bit more zoomed out. There's a lot more, like, wiggle room to not die. Okay, we gotta go in between. I've probably done this a million times before, so I'm just like, yeah, okay. And the chest was in a uh, plain sight, wasn't it? It was just keep going in that direction. So easy money, easy money. But yeah, no, I've I've been loving this game, and I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad I've had the opportunity to to play it again. And uh, the the just it's weird because I don't even remember much about this game at all. Like from. Actually, 15, 14 and a half years ago? Like, it's been forever. You just get some oil and the, the thing moves. It's amazing. Or it disintegrates. One of the two. Actually, it does it on a couple of levels. Cool. Wow, that's a lot of levels that get opened up because of that. Um, and I love how, like, yeah, it's like, that was item 90, and it still opened up a bunch of levels. That's, I just love that about this game. The fact that, like, you know, you keep uncovering new things, and then you'll you'll go back into the level and you'll be like, ah, oh, okay, like, even though I've got, I've had all the abilities this whole stream, there's still just more stuff. So. See, now we got this. Now I can explore more. Oh boy. Okay, I guess I'm flying. And I gotta avoid eating. And then I've gotta throw someone. I've gotta throw someone there. And I gotta do a mini game as well. Okay, okay, we've got a lot of a lot of things to take in here. I love ground pounding. Every game needs like so much ground pounding like that. Well, okay. 
Okay, I guess we're doing the golf now. 50 coins, but granted, I've gotten all the coins back, so... That's, I guess, the one thing, the... The golf just exists. Cool. Cool. Very cool. Very cool, I am... Just... I'm, I'm doing wonders. Just give up. I'm glad you can just give up. I'm glad you can do that. Okay. Okay, don't... Full power it. Just most power it. Cool. Cool. It seems that 80% of the bar it goes half the distance. Bunkrota. Okay, okay. We'll get there. Uh, but yeah, this game's an absolute treat. I'm glad they um, re-released it on the 3DS. I'm sad that you can't get it anymore. Okay, now I've got to perfectly judge this one. Oh boy. I have no basis. I'm a god! Woo! That's amazing. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm gonna need to get the key and get to the chest, which is probably behind the minigame player. So the key... Is somewhere in this direction. Uh... Okay, there it is. I need to find an enemy to, to throw. Where would we find an enemy in this kind of level? Okay, I... <laughs> Down I go. Okay, I cannot go anywhere more down from that direction, which means I have to, I actually have to, go all the way up here at least. Uh, well, you can't, you can't get this game, but you know, well, true, true. What am I standing on here? Like, I don't know how much, some retro games are actually not too bad. But some are. I guess you gotta just go fat if you wanna go down. I feel like the enemy is probably up and left, because that's the only place I haven't seen yet. Dang it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe someone give me an eBay cost for how much Warrior Land 3 on the Game Boy Color is. I assume it's sold okay. It's Warrior Land. Like, had to have done okay if they kept releasing more game. Also, they chose the uh, easy to break barrel as the item of choice. They chose the easy to break barrel as the item of choice, which means I need to stop getting fat and start making pods with this. Oh boy. But yeah, oh boy. I, I know, I think we had like conversations about the used game market. Last week, but uh, yeah, like it's a bit wild. Some of those prizes. Can I just jump? I can't jump back. I have to be able to like throw it through there. Okay, yes, that's actually exactly what I need. Okay, now I need to go down. Battle from the left one and two. Oh, just nigh impossible to to get because you got to deal with uh. The costs. Oop. There we go. And now, the final straw, which is getting down, I guess. Yeah, I, I always worry about like these older games that are just eternally bound and, you know, pe people going for investment, but I feel like rare games shouldn't be rare. Uh, really, well, there's, there's inevitably gonna be just games that are rare, and that's it. Okay, give me, give me the food, give me the food. Okay, I missed it. Cool. Give me the food, give me the food. Okay, I'm gonna do a mega jump here. And then I go down here. There we go. Look at that, easy. But yeah, like, I feel like there's a lot of fun experiences that shouldn't really be locked behind, like, them being rare collector's games. I feel like everyone should be able to play any game, really. And if publishers are just willing to just not release the game, they're just like, oh, it's fine. 
you know, like, what do you do about it? Last week I heard about, uh, D. Coldies? D. Coldies, or rather about the scandals. I just went to the website and saw Lego Star Wars on PS3 for $7 on a full set. Good game, which is, uh, kind of childhood for only 500 rubles. Stonks. The original Lego Star Wars is definitely, like, a nostalgic game. I don't think there's, like, I, I played it kind of recently and I was like, eh, it's, this is... It is superseded. But it is also, like, it is a game of childhood and nostalgia, and it deserves to kind of exist in some way. I think that the, the complete collection is, like, it's not the most authentic, but it is, like, a version of the game that does keep most of what is intact. But I do agree, where it's like, again, the original version will have differences, and some people might be like, hey, what were the differences? I feel like I could just swim this, like, I could just actually swim this and jump out the other side. Or even better, just keep going. Aha, hands, you can't get me today. There we go. Aha! Another one of these... <laughs> riddle blocks. Okay, there's a chest. There's a guy being irritating. I can roll. I gotta... There we go. Games of our father's childhood, Mario 7 on Dendi. Oh, good ol' Seven Grandad. That's the one. Okay, I'm trying to decipher what's going on. We've got a bit where I probably need to set fire to all the bits. And I didn't break my way down, whoops. There's a lot of fun, like, little bootleg games. I, I do recall that. Okay, so I can do that. And I can also even break this, can't I? Can't I just do... It's not wide enough. Okay, break it on one side. Let's go. No. No. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that fire. There it is. Oops. No. Get back in there. In another rush of Goomba stops you. Exactly. Exactly. But I feel like I've probably had so many streams where I've mentioned game preservation and that kind of stuff, so I don't know, I'm a bit of a bit of a scratch record on this one. Ah, oh, gosh. All I will say is, again, at least EA had the courtesy to not unrelease the original Dead Space. Let me just say that. There we go, first try. Game preservation is so important. Exactly, exactly. And that's, I guess, to cycle back to the whole, like, remakes of games that are not, like, outdated kind of angle. Mmm. <laughs> I got it. I got That's, I was thinking, I was like, there was no other path to get here. There was no other way to get to get to this room. That's one where it's like you've just got to like take a leap, man. You've just got to know. I love a warrior's eyes and mustache have invulnerability to fight. Exactly. Listen, you eat enough garlic, you become imper impervious to the elements. Uh. Okay, this is another hope for the best kind of shot. Okay. I, I think I under hit it. Oh, yes! Charging 50 coins, they're really going for it. Like, if you suck at the golf... Oh boy, you got no hope to finish these levels. And... Oh, I, I realize it's like, all this is is that I get to roll from earlier. Uh, not 
the intended way of doing this. That was <laughs> not at all intended. Oh well. <laughs> Alright, back down. Roll it again. But, uh, but... Did I really just do that twice? I don't know, Wario. I love how it's panning the camera down. I guess Wario is a graduate of my dining room in school with this garlic. Garlic is a an amazing treat. And it smells horrendous, and I love it. Okay, we're not jumping on the next screen. I fall down and then jump. Fall down and then jump. And then... Jump. Oh no, I found the chest. Where's the key? That's probably the quickest key to chest in the entire game. I love how they're all blue chests as well, so they are pretty much like... That's the end of the game, basically. You know? The blue test tube. Look at that. back in N3. I love how I've still not cleared N3. And also W5, so we know where we're going. Alright, back to the top again. Okay, students, today we eat a plate of garlic and boiled cabbage. Uh... I think I just keep going, like, all the way right. Only str strongers. Alright, there's this guy, so I know I've gotta probably keep going. I will say the day and night thing doesn't really, like, affect too much of the game, to be honest. I feel like I kicked him maybe once or twice, like, when I was playing, I was like, oh, I went the wrong way. Or stuff like that. Okay, so there's this. So you get the grey key. this, and I can climb down, wherever I am. This is where I continue going now. Cool. Past the pipe button. Which I'm still invisible for. I'm still going. I'm still going. You know. Alright, that's the chest. That's the chest. Okay. Oh boy, where, where am I jumping? Very nice of them to put a zombie there, just to... This is actually... Is this actually a speedrun? Like, am I, like... Duck? Oh. Am I actually doing this right? Cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I'll accept it. Okay. And now I go back to this room. I've just got to figure out how to... Oh, the platform. The plat... The, there are platforms that exist. Somewhere. Now I go around and I probably, yeah, I've probably got the ability to fall back down while I'm still invisible and I can't tell where exactly I'm standing. But he seemed to be able to jump it. I can't do this while I'm invisible. <laughs> I need an uninvisible. Uh, I guess I needed, I actually need the zombie to get me, don't I? No, but you have to be invisible in order to get over there. Is there light? Is there something? Wait a second, who was that dude in the corner of the screen when you went into this room? That's a scientist guy. He throws the potion to make you invisible, so if you become visible, then you've got that, but... If you become a zombie... I guess, how do you un-zombie? Let's, let us be zombie. Okay, so that's a no-no. And the fire turns you. Oh, you've got to turn out of being a zombie in the fire that's right here. That's cheeky. Okay, okay. So I think if Squidward will appear, wherever he goes. Alright, get me Squidward. Now I'm going to jump. Oh. 
Could have gone better. Could have actually gone better. Okay, I, I, all I've got to do is turn into a zombie and then land in that one specific fire. Oops. This is going to be kind of awkward. Oh, okay. Dang it. Dang it. This is a this is a precise angle, I guess. So a random dude moving on the screen when you're moving between the rooms in the upper left corner. Squidward, come on. <sighs> Dang it, Squidward. Oh, oh, on the in, in this room or the other room? Uh. <clears throat> I can't do it from that ledge. Do it from that ledge. Oh my gosh. This is uh this is this is peak Wario Land right here, where it's just like what it what is the intended way of doing this? Because yeah, there's no zombies over here. And this in this when you went to this door. Actually, yeah, hold on, wait, get that zombie. There we go, so jumping on the eye, so the eye doesn't get me. There we go. Is that eye thing? No? I went to this door, and I went back out the other side? No. I am not sure what specifically we're referring to, unfortunately. There we go, first try. First try, I guess, yeah. Look at that! The red ring? Bracelet? Ring? Who knows? I feel like that- <laughs> probably at that point where there's like a bunch of treasures that are just like, that's it. Like, you don't- you don't- you don't get anywhere. I guess my brain is glitching. Truth be told, like, I think it's very easy to, like, I mean, I, this happens to me as well, it's like, there's just a bit of light that, like, flickers in the corner of your eye, and it's just like, what's going on? Like, some, must be something, or someone, or something like that. The Grim Reaper, or perhaps. <laughs> so, I mean, I've been seeing the Grim Reaper a bunch. I've still, I've still yet to play Earthbound on my channel without Sony Music copyright striking everything. My life is incomplete. He can't come for me yet. There is bound to be a solid reason why that block is there in particular. Uh, which told me my time is going. I always love the, the Grim Reaper stories. It's just like fun symbolism. It's like, oh, what's the guy? It's a guy in a cloak. And usually a grisly voice. Oh yeah, I gotta slide this. Do I still have a bear over here? No, I destroyed all the bears. Build a bear is extinct now. It was all my doing. Was that just for a coin as well? It actually might have been, yeah. So never mind, I just got the got the the, the key. Call it a day. Okay, so I think uh, Octopus. Is the, is the lyric in that magic school bus song Octopus in the neighborhood? Is that the actual lyric? Oh, it must be in the top of the right one, yeah. Seriously, this game is peak platform in the late nineties. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a lot of, like, really good platformers that, especially Nintendo, has their name on, but, like, I don't know why, like, after Mario 64, there's a lot of brand recognition on 
the 3D ones. Everything has to be 3D. I don't know. I think this was probably in that kind of era where if it was 3D, it was widely touted. And granted, it's 2000. There's a lot of, like, too good, like, 3D games at this point. We've got Thief, we've got Zelda Ocarina of Time, we've got Half-Life, we've got, uh, Banjo-Kazooie, we've got Donkey Kong 64, I guess, by now. Um, we've got Rayman 2, which is my darling child. Uh, even 2000, you've got, um, a lot of, like, lesser-known, uh, Turok. Also, chuck that one in. Also, Quake. Also, Quake 3 is out by now. Also, Unreal is out. When are we ever going to be able to buy Unreal again? You can't have Mario 2D. Take <laughs> 4. Exactly. You've got to be kidding. Oh, okay. No, we're cool. Was this... where I needed to be? Like, this is... I, I should have seen. I should have seen if there was a chest over there. Yeah! That's... bizarre. This doesn't seem like it's a crazy puzzle here. It's just... you need an item, so... I need to knock this out of the way, just to let him fall down. Down you go. <laughs> Whoops. And he shall break the way, forth I cometh. I love what's donuts. Oh boy. Wario. Wario, you gotta lose weight in place. Okay, phew. There we go. Crack open the cold one, and here we are. Here we have a green shield. Wow. We're really grasping at straws on this one, aren't we? <laughs> okay, so to the next time of, uh, not to the next stream, huh? There's only, how many, how many treasures left? Six. We could do this. Easy. Uh, to the Cave of Flames. Uh... Okay, so I think... Let me, let me try and recall where... This went. I'm pretty sure this is like, we're looking for the... Um, for the groundy, like, pillar. Wherever it is. Well, okay. I don't think it was in this map, though. It doesn't seem like it was in this map. Ah, oh, it must have been in the next one, but... Uh, down here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I've definitely been enjoying this game. I think it rides the line maybe a bit closer, and maybe a bit too close, to uh, Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, I'm stuck because someone have thin doors. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I feel like... Uh, there's a lot of, like, really fun kind of level concepts in this game. And just, like, ways that you use the items. That is the green key. Okay. I don't think it's this way, then. It must be further along, yeah. Um, but there is a lot of, like... You know, figuring it out. And really, like, exploring around, learning the mechanics. And kind of knowing how the game itself just does stuff, how it works, how it kind of plays out. Oh, yeah, this is what I was thinking. Easy. Okay, so I guess I bounce off the dude. I need another one to bounce off of. Have I been in this room before? It looks a little familiar for some reason. And I need a third dude to bounce off. Okay. Or not, actually. How's Warriors still running, run around the hell pit? Exactly! I am... Oh, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out my head, like, what am I doing now? Um, so I'm gonna get one of these guys up. Oh my goodness. I gotta get one of these guys up there. One of these guys up there. 
and then, without walking too far in the other direction, because he'll just respawn down here, I need to bounce off two of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to bounce off two of them and somehow get up there. Does that make sense? And I've got this guy, which is just gonna... Oh, this is an aggravating setup right here. Maybe I just charge it. Oh, there we go. First try. First try. For the best puzzles. Exactly. Exactly. The enemies are just all wandering around being absolute pains. And this is like, I, I just see this and I go, I know exactly. Like, you're just gonna not take out the enemies as you throw them up. They knew exactly what they're doing. I'm looking at this going, ugh. Oh, oh, just, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. My goodness, my goodness. Nope, just, just, just let me, let me take, let me take one of you. Okay, you go up. Okay. I would like you to move a bit. There you go. Nope. Okay, they are both gonna be dangerously close to each other. Okay, there we go. It's just for a coin! It's just for a coin! <laughs> been doing what have I been doing no this has to be it has to just be further up right like I'm just using these enemies wrong I guess then so I just gotta be doing the same Absolute pain to get this guy like sitting up here again. There we go. That's yeah okay. This is what I wanted. This is all I wanted. Warrior on Sega Saturn. I wish. Um. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is, uh... Okay, I can crawl through here 10 FPS again. Oh, am I losing frames? I've lost a couple of frames, apparently. Kinda weird. The Sega Saturn is a wonderful console, though. It deserves its place in history. As, uh... What the heck was Sega thinking? <laughs> Get him out of there. But, uh... I love that- I love that generation of just, like, there's so many, like, wonderful games that were, like, weirdly walled by hardware. Again, this is a room for a coin. I just got a coin. So... I have to be flat. But I can't be flat and go up this high. Right? Or can I? Can't be flat and go up this whole way, I'll tell you that. So, um, but yeah, I feel like it's, uh, you know, the PS2 and the GameCube, miraculous consoles for, like, pulling as much as they actually do. But, uh, yeah, the N64 is like, yeah, it's limiting in various ways, and it came out lost. And it didn't have to be limited, but it ended up being limited. It's still neat, but it's just got a narrow library, that's its only, like, floor, really. And the control is a bit weird. Here we go! First try! Nice. <laughs> that was not a first try at all. Crack it open. Look at that! S scissors! The scissorman! <laughs> oh my goodness. Not the scissorman. 
There was a balloon this whole time and we're just... oh. Oh. <laughs> Wario, you monster. You monster. So back up to above the clouds. Uh... Where... Do I need to get the... Actually, yeah, I think this is a... This is actually the minigame I beat. A very interesting minigame in Russia. Try to beat the games collect for GameCube. Uh, there are five more treasures left. And two of them are in this level. But I gotta be a pro golfer in order to <laughs> beat the game still, apparently. <laughs> dang it, dang it. I'm trying to hit the edge too close. Too close. Done. Oh. Oh, a <laughs> bit of backspin. A little bit of backspin. Is this just the flat one? Is this is just like hit it the long way and then don't knock it into the lava at the end. There you go. There we go. Nice. Legends say only the greatest can see Mario Sunshine original box in Russia. I feel like, yeah, being a games collector in Russia is hard because there's just, in general, not many printed releases. No matter where you go. Oops. And I guess that's a, that's a tough thing in, uh, you know, any region where they decide to just not print many copies. Like, uh, I, I notoriously know my, uh, my cousin got a box. Just the box, not the game, but the box. And that was a super valuable thing of, uh, Paper Mario. An official Australian box of Paper Mario, because they only ever made a couple thousand of them. It's, like, weirdly rare. Is it worth... Preserving? I don't know, man. Like, Paper Mario's been released on a bunch of consoles. Russia had an amazing game dev scene in the early 2000s. It did. There was a bunch of, like, neat games from them. Uh, they got killed off mostly when more taxes introduced. Yeah. Now your government just says to pirate the games. If you can't buy them, pirate them. Uh, quote, not actually doing it. Sorry. <laughs> disavow, disavow YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I like... You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. You're not joking? Oh, no. So I assume I just keep going up, I guess. Well, that's what the... That's what the blue key is. That's where the balloon is, okay. Oh, that's, I needed it for a platform. You're supposed to make seven games, seven? Seven games in a year, what? Oh, I need the key. Okay, well, Squidward, where are you going? Seven is absurd, like that is like turbo ET level. Ugh. Is the game gonna tell me off as like, oh, there's no light down in that direction? It probably is, and that guy just entered the void, apparently. Minimum, that's, that's insane. That's insane. Oh, you do need to be a zombie all the way down. Ah. Okay, I'm well, back to the zombies. Hi, the zombie. How you doing? These birds mean nothing to me. And down I go. Okay, let's unzombie. Or do I? Do I take the long way? Just, oh, braving the birds, apparently. No. <laughs> no, apparently not. Actually, maybe. Can you kill the frog with the, with the zombie? You can, okay. But you can't, you can't defeat that. Bricks. Well, I'm at the bottom of the level, so I don't see there any way to fall down even further. 
Looks like I need to jump. There are so many birds! Oh my gosh! Uh, Poop Train crushed in 2008. We've got some unique games around our time. Exactly. Alright, so that's the key. So I just gotta work my way back up. Let me out of here! Oh, I, I'm the bird. As long as I'm good all the way here. Nope. Dang it, last minute Squidward. There we go. Easy money. Easy money. Another chest down. Four to go. It's a jackhammer? Okay. I remember seeing this ages ago, and it's just like, oh yeah. I love how this is a mechanic that I guess just, I, it's coming up in a few levels, but right now it's like, yeah, no, it's just a stream, basically. Not a racing club, dear god, mother, please save me. I guess the worst part is that, like, being forced to make your own games and not importing others as well. Like, video games are a... I guess they've always kind of been a bit of an international thing, because game development is, I don't know. You'll definitely get your local scene promoted more, but, like, you know, Nintendo forever exists, despite us. Well, I guess we always imported a lot of Japanese electronics anyways, so, uh, NEC, Panasonic. I was going to say Panasonic goes in Japan, uh, Japanese. That was like the Atari game which killed Atari. Oh dang it. They just killed Russian devs. There's a, there's a lot of like bizarre, well not bizarre, but like a lot of interesting games that are just like so noteworthy like that. All of them. Wasn't there something made by Russians, like, more recently? Or is it, like, it's kind of just the wares scene now? Okay, frog. Uh... I wonder if, like... That is actually the door I need to go in. I can't recall. Because I'm thinking of this on my head, it's like, when did I... Oh, my gosh, these squids. I'm just getting blooper, like, PTSD, you know? Okay, okay, nope. Ah. Oh. Barrel, okay, we're good. Yeah, sure, one, one block, that's all you need. Okay, what's in the door, what's in the door? That's a lot of racing club. Wood right. Yeah, yeah, this is where I want to go. Oh boy, this is gonna be weird. Russian game on box means it is bad. I will say it doesn't help internationally as well, because internationally we kind of weirdly smear anything from Russia. I don't know why. I'm not, I, I, not just recently, it's been a thing for like ages. You gotta, you gotta crouch for that one. I always found it's weird, because it's like Russia has like a, a decent Space Rangers 2 Dominators. Russia has like a decent like industrial scene and it's just like, eh, just no, no exports. Do I touch the bats? There we go. Uh, I can, I can definitely say I have not heard of it, unfortunately. Okay, so there's the... I guess, can I go over this? There you go. Over this, get the key, and now I gotta get all the way back without touching the bats. Or maybe I do still have to touch the bats. I 
Our devs uh, fled to different countries and are scared to tell anyone that they are Russian devs. All streams I see on Twitch are always in acrylic letters for how they are called. How do I go down from here? Like, you can easily do it with the bat, but... I need to somehow go down. And these platforms are all the same width. Best I can do is maybe touch this? Nope. That was, that was a bit weird looking. There must be a way to, like, be at the bottom on the right side. No, I actually think, because there's a gap there, I think you legitimately just have to walk your way down. I think so. How about try to stream Space Rangers? Is that the Russian game? I'll give it a go. I'll give it. I'll give it a go. Like, not on stream, but just in the back, because a lot, a lot of the games I play on stream like a sentimental value to me. But uh, oh boy, I gotta time this one. Whoa. Ah, dang it! This is. Oh, the worst part is that that would have been the last one as well. Ah, oh, okay, okay, I get it. I get it now. Treasure is just one is nice. I prefer Space Rangers too. Definitely played some, like, bizarre games on the recent indie scene. Like some... I don't know why, maybe maybe that, like... Not necessarily that Russian games tarnish my repu... Or, like, my perception of indie games, but more that, like... Low-budget games. <laughs> That's my general sentiment. Just because it's low-budget doesn't mean it's bad, but... It does mean it's a tougher pill to swallow. Ah! Okay. Opens EXE file, slowly transforms into Russian while playing this game with Haddon, Earflaps, and Vodka. Don't forget the Adidas track pants. The hard bass. Okay. Here we go, here we go. Nope. Nope. Just timing it poorly. Think about many Russian games, even the bad ones, was that they had visions. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's something that, I mean, even if I rip into like a lot of low-budget indie games, there's a number of them where they wanted to make a cool game. They just had no idea how to. <laughs> and a lot of people are super ambitious because they see a game by a very large studio and then they try to recreate that. And that doesn't really, that doesn't really work out all the time, I'll just say that. And then sometimes, they are still trying. Cough, cough, star citizen. Little goggles, little binoculars, I think they're goggles. Oh, maybe they're night vision. <laughs> what are you looking at, warrior? He's peering around. What does he see? Oh, there was a door the whole time. Is, is, is that what we're going for? All the way back in N6. The sad part about this, I know the story in the original language. I know how it went with all the details. They described it in all the details. Oh no. Look at that. I finally get to go in this direction. There we go. So finally, the last... Third last treasure. Uh, okay, where is... Where are we going? I think it was just been here, right? So that was where the green was. There must be more to this. The pipe. I think there was another room. And it was just like... Entirely like blacked off. Maybe off the left. There we go. Yeah, no, I'm definitely enjoying this game, and I would... There we go. I would highly recommend this. Just, in general. We got lasers. I'll tell you, no, I'll tell you no, this is a killer area. Okay. Going up a ladder. Going up a ladder. And conveyor... Oh, boy. 
We're just, we're just getting, getting hit by that. There is nothing else here. We just... We're just gonna acknowledge that there's a thing that's just gonna kill me? Maybe you drop down at some point? Like I'm seeing, is that like a plat- that's a platform, yeah. That's what I mean. It's out of camera, so you're just gonna have to take a bit of a guess. I do remember. I do remember there being more conveyor belt bits, and I guess this is it. Guys, we're gonna make the new best game of all time. You just need to give us all your money. We're gonna finish your investments. That's the problem with investments. It's like either it'll sometimes make miracles, and more times than not, it makes tragedies, and it's just like, oh. Is the chest just down here? Like, that's it? It is. Okay. Easy. Easy one. Three years late. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a platinum record. That's yellow. Yellow platinum. <laughs> Oh no, my platinum record! This is the only way to play it. By hitting it with a hammer. Or with a mallet. I know it's a gong, probably. What is that, a tower? Look, the sun is rising. I guess, I guess that makes above the clouds again. We can go above more clouds. Okay, back to the next map again. Two more treasures. Two more treasures to go. Hang in there, everyone. Okay, so I assume I just need to keep going up, because the blue key was just further up. Oops. There we go. I'm actually kind of impressed that, like, I thought this would, like, linger dangerously into the three-hour mark. At two and a half, it's definitely a longer stream, but it's not tremendously long yet. Famous last words, but... Investors, where is our game? Uh... Oh, we, we knew not how to make the greatest game of... Sorry, we did not know how to make the best game of all time, so we changed the game engine 69 times. Also remember when you gave us 3 million group... Yeah. Like... I think one thing is that there needs to be... Track record. And also, investors need to actually be realistic with, like, how much a game costs, because... And, and project management. It's all, it all stems on project management. Infinite money doesn't cure bad project management. That's something I've definitely found out in the, uh, in the industry. You can have enough money and just not enough of a drive. Or not enough of um, actual, you know, steering a team. about this is actually the I mean this is the second last treasure and the last treasure is in a different level so this is the last time we've probably seen most of the levels and there's only a few you know this level is nearly about to go so I definitely like the variety of the levels although some of them do blend together I guess but like this one's got its own music you know like that's how that's how cool it is Take the balloon and go over. There you go. Ah, oh. it's a charge jumper. There we go. I've been holding up and like doing the jump like that. There we go. Oh, and <laughs> I, I just see see the the, the key project manager, bro. Sounds American. I mean, yeah, it's it's an American thing, I guess. We are Russians, we will make money our way in this development uh, circle. Only we will make the game. You can give us money. I mean, sometimes, you know, like, it works, but I feel like there is a degree of, like, adamantly doing it differently to the Americans. Some people will do that. And this is like, I don't know, man, they, they kind of figured it out. They don't always do it, and it's not always perfect as well. There's a lot of games where they just 
take the infinite cycle. Not that they're not delivering features, but that they keep delivering features, and they don't know when to stop. That's a that's a real issue with a lot of like um, like complex uh, programs in Enterprise, and, like American stuff. It's just like they just keep thinking that they're gonna keep adding to it. It's like why? Why are you gonna do this? Oh, this is this is very awkward. So it's this guy. And then I've got to be able to throw something. The only thing I can throw is the rock, right? And I can't put down the rock in any way. And then the investors realized they needed to make a game and started to put project managers. And they all went EA. Well, yeah, okay. EA is not, like, not what people should be basing project management off of. Okay, so I've got this. Clearly, I have to come from that direction, right? Oh, duh, I can ground pound while holding the rock. Easy. Should I break that? I should break that, just in case. Fun fact! Facts of fun. Oh! <laughs> this bird, this bird. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, they knew exactly what they're doing. Granted, I guess. Okay, right. bird, crouch. Whoops, whoops. Whoops, double whoops. There we go. Oh! Stalker, originally made by the concept I described to you within this management, uh, but with things are how they hired Canadian as a project manager. There we go. First try. Every day I've hated him. But did he pull it together? Was he the, you know, the linchpin of making those games work? I don't know. Was he? Like... Pickaxe. There we go. Yeah, like that. That's a, you know, my diamond pick has broken a wormhole into like space. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh wait, whoops, wrong direction. We're going east. So this is it. The last treasure, original version of Stalker, was terrible. Buggy, if you will. You can describe it in another word. Oops. My knowledge of Stalker is that, like, none of the- there's three games, but none of them are, like, actually sequels. Like, that's my understanding, which is kind of bizarre. So you can go into this wormhole. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, do you have to, like, do a lob shot here? Yes, you do. You gotta do a lob shot. Amazing. Amazing. This is, this is exactly what the final challenge needs to be. Just doing something really weirdly different. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then I gotta be able to keep doing lob shots here. Eh. Eh. Dang. <laughs> Bounce off my head. I love this. Just even the very last thing I gotta do in this game. And it's just something unique and different. And then you've got a 50-50 guess where you put it. Well, I guess the bottom is a coin, so. They- oh, and there's some Russian there. Oh. Listen, in interviews with employees, they said they worked for a couple of hours before him after they started crunching and cutting the game. And there you go! What is that? I don't know. <laughs> clothes? I think it's clothes. So, perfect! I love this face! This is good faces right here. This is it. This is, this is the happiest moment of my life. 
just seeing this face. And it cycles the colors, it's got a jam. This is it. That's it. That's it. It's such a jam though. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, if you can recreate this, like, this face in Minecraft, go for it. So you can press A. And, uh, that's it, basically. The game actually just ends. But you now have time attack mode. Compl compete for time taken to get all four keys and clear the course. Which is rather interesting, actually. So yeah, you can go into each level, and you compete for time. There's a timer now, and you can go for time. There's no reward for it, unless you're going for the Retro Achievement set, in which case, yeah, there is a time challenge. Um, but yeah, uh, I, don't know, I guess it is just continuing the game, but like, that is all the treasure in the game. So, as one last hurrah, let's just beat the final boss again. Why not? Will my skills... I, it's the same final boss, it hasn't changed at all. It's, it's the same guy. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't think the outro is even any different, even. Bonk. Maybe I know what I'm doing a bit, a bit better this time, whoops. Or I could just game over. That's what I do. There you go. But yeah, no, I've definitely enjoyed playing this game again, and this is, a, you know, this game's fairly dear to my heart, and I'm kind of surprised I never did replay it all the way through. It's definitely a bit obtuse at times, and, uh, you know, some of the some of the levels are a little bit on the uh, too large side, I guess. But it's also, you know what, it's really neat for a game on the Game Boy Color, and for, like, what it is. There you go. Easy. So, uh, let's plan out. Yeah, we just do this. Uh, and did you get the perfect back when you were a kid? I did in 2008, but I knew I was abusing save states and I wasn't really playing this game as legit. So, this is the first time I've legitimately gone out and done this. It's not really that, like, crazy hard. I'd say it's a little harder than Mario Land 2, but none of them are impossibly tough. They're just tricky. I guess that's the fun part of challenge. They're tricky. There's something that. You know, it's not just like, oh, okay, like, like, how many platforms do you play where it's like, oh, just, you know, do the jumps, do, like, this precise jump all the time. Like, I find that my enjoyment with, like, Super Meat Boy wanes because it's a lot of levels to accomplish kind of the same kinds of jumps all the time. Whereas, a game like this, you know, like, the last level, I'm doing this unique kind of throwing mechanic. Just, it's something new every time. And that's one thing I love about a lot of Nintendo's games in particular. There's definitely going to be other platformers that do that. Um, but I think there is something smart about games just being tricky. Coming up with new things to constantly do. Um, rather than necessarily just being harder arrangements of jumps. So... And obviously this one's a bit more of a puzzle game. If all the enemies in this game were humans, does that mean Wario killed many of them? Yes! And Wario doesn't care. <laughs> he got money! All the treasure you have collected, which is actually all of them now, so... This wizard is so powerful they can send Wario back to his own world. Why did he lose against the wizard, the, um, the clown? Look at that! I don't know if this bag is bigger than when I beat it at the end of the last stream, but... Yeah! He's a happy chappy, so... But yeah, that is, that is it. That is Wario Land 3 in its almost entirety because there are the coins, the, the, the music coins. If you want to play the fourth golf game, sure. But I don't think there's really anything else to see. It's there for challenge. It's there for, you know, pushing, pushing your limits. So, um, but yeah, no, I've definitely enjoyed playing this again. Uh, I'm glad I managed to get it all out in January, so. What will I play next month? I've got a couple of ideas. I haven't landed on which one in particular, so I can't answer that, but... <laughs> we'll get to it. I don't know if it's gonna be a new one. A new game, or if it's still like playing through an older one that I played ages ago on my channel. Ages. Shout out to the one guy responsible for the entire manual. 
that's a that's a tall order right there. So, and the Super Mario Club and Bill Trinum. There he is. It is it that is an inkling. They knew this whole time. They were like, ah, oh, that's a genius sprite. There's probably there's probably a lot of like Nintendo concepts that have been in the vault for ages and they only just bring them out again to like turn it into a brand new thing. Like I bet you Splatoon was not a spur of the moment idea. I think they were waiting for the right opportunity to just release it. In the same way that Pikmin has always been an idea, I know Miyamoto had, and he only kind of waited until the GameCube to pull it off. So, but yeah, this game, I love it. I love it. It's it's not perfect, but it's so distinct and so fun. I think it's worth a play. So, I hope you've all appreciated uh, watching this, imagine making a game about war from one spray warrior. Line. True. And you gotta have a perfect again. You gotta have one of these. <laughs> you just got perfect rolled. Right there. You can't even exit out of this one now. You are stuck on this screen. So, uh, with, with that, uh, I hope you all have had a wonderful time watching this stream and, uh, watching me finally beat this game so yeah if you enjoyed it and I guess both of you have already follow followed exactly <laughs> getting perfect roll is great so yeah if you enjoyed the stream and uh, you want to see more um, all the vods are on YouTube and there's like actually two years of streams now to watch they've all been like two hours so what is that actually like that would take you four days to watch in another two years I can literally tell you to go back and watch all the streams, and without sleeping, you would still not have watched all the streams by the time I stream next. Amazing. So, next week, I'll be playing a new game. Uh, what will it be? You'll find out. Uh, but, yeah. Oh, it's been good fun. Pokemon Ruby. Eventually. I don't know if it'll be the next one, but eventually. Eventually. So, with that, thank you very, very much for staying around and chatting with me. Uh, have a good one. Stay safe. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late. I don't have to... I, I got I got a good Pokemon Blue Let's Play. I don't have any huge desire to play that one again. So, <laughs> have a good one, everyone.